50 and 4, and I'm going to read it from the Amplified as well as from the King James Version. I'm going to read it from the Amplified first, then the King James, and that's Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, verse 4. Now, if you don't have uh, your Bible with you, there's one right there, and, or just write it down. Okay. In Jeremiah, in the Amplified Version, it says, well, matter of fact, I'll read it from the King James first, because it's You'll get a better uh, feel of it once you uh, go into it. Jeremiah 50 and 4. In those days, and in that time, says the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and their children of Judah, there and the children of Judah together, with continual weeping, they shall say, they shall come and seek the Lord their God. Five. They shall ask the way they shall ask the way of Zion with their face towards it, saying, Come, the, yes, come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in the preparation what is it? Preparatural covenant that will not be forgotten. Six. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherd has laid them astray. Their shepherd has led them astray. They have turned them away on the mountain. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All who found them have devoured them, and their adversary said, We have not offended because they have sinned against the Lord. The habitation of justice, the Lord, the hope of their father. Now, in the Amplified Version, it reads really so. It says, in those days and at the time, says the Lord, the children, of the, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together. They shall come up weeping as they come to seek the Lord their God, inquiring for all of him and requiring him both by right of necessity, necessity, and of the promise of God, God's word. Five, they shall ask the way of Zion with their face in the direction saying, come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in the preparation of the covenant that shall not be forgotten. Six, my people have been lost sheep, their shepherd has led them astray to the favorite place of idols on the mountain that seduces. They have gone from one side to another, mountain to mountain to hill. They have forgotten their own resting place. All who felt them devoured them, and their adversary said, We are not guilty because they have sinned against the Lord. And as we begin to look over at Matthew 18 and 11, Matthew 18 and 11, it says this, it says, Matthew 18 and 11, it says this, it says, where is it, Matthew 18 and 11, it says, For the Son of Man has come to save that which is, or that which was lost. I want to use for my title, Are You? Are you lost? And for my subtitle or my textual uh, goal, be careful who you get directions from. Are you lost? And be careful who you get directions from. There was a guy at my job, there's a guy at my job, every day, every week he asked me, what are you going to speak on Sunday? What are you going to teach? And I, and I, say whatever it is, but this particular Saturday, I'm pretty much stuck. I had no idea what I was going to speak on. Sometimes it comes to me during the week. Sometimes it comes to me that day, that Saturday. Sometimes it comes to me when I'm up in the morning around 12, uh, about 5 o'clock. But I told him, I was like, I don't know. I'm lost. He said, that's a good topic right there. You're lost. You know, you preach about being lost because there's a lot of people in church that are lost. I was like, wow. Now, this is a Caucasian guy. He said, there's a lot of people who are lost. So I began to listen to him as he began to tell me about your loss. 
I began to listen to his little sermon there as he began to unwind and build off of being lost. And as I began to build off of this I'm lost or I'm lost, I began to hear God speak in regards to how many of us are lost and how we must be careful who we get direction from. And then as he began to unwind and God began to reveal, he began to unwind and God began to reveal these things to me. I had to stop and pause just so I could take notes because it started getting good to me. You know, it's like the more he started building off of these different things, I was like, wow, that's a good note. That's a good one. That's a good one. I, I tried, yeah, wow, that's good. That's good because many of us are lost. Many people come to church because somebody makes them come to church. Or many people come to church because I don't know why they come to church, but you can tell that they really don't want to be there by the way they worship. You begin to find out that people aren't excited about serving God anymore because they're lost and somehow they got disconnected. How many of you ever been driving down the street or taking public transportation and there was a detour? And in this detour, you're watching and then it's time for you to get off and you have to get off in the midst of this detour. Or you're driving down the street and all of a sudden you get a detour. And all of a sudden you find yourself lost, but then you begin to say to yourself, you say, maybe if I keep going, I can find out where I'm going. Instead of stopping and asking for assistance, we keep going, maybe if I keep going, maybe I'll find my way. And to the point you find yourself an hour from where your destination is. But then we begin to get off course. Somewhere, somehow we got lost. And then when we realize that we got frustrated and the GPS seemed like it can't help us, we go and ask for assistance. But the thing is, we must be careful who we get direction from. You see, I began to see that many of us go through our life journey mentally, physically, spiritually, mentally, physically, and spiritually dazed, confused, and lost. Only to find ourselves blind seeking our way back to our destination. It's like the blind, it's like a blind man asking a lost man for direction. Can you imagine being blind, asking someone lost for direction? As we begin to look at this, our walk with God, as we begin to understand that it is time for us to get into the presence of God. And it's time for us to not allow the distractions of life to detour us. On our way here today, we were driving and we got on Damon and then we got close to where the viaduct is over there by uh, Strojan Hospital. And they blocked the viaduct. So we had a detour. And I thought it was funny because how God was dealing with me with detours in my sermon. And all of a sudden, I'm driving down the street. And there's a detour, and I had no other choice. I was lost. So like everybody else, I followed the person in front of me. The question was, was that person going to go through the viaduct, that one-way viaduct, past the police, or were they going to make a left or a right? So I followed the person that made the left, and then they made another right, and then I made another right, and then another left, and then I was back on my destination. But we have to be careful who we get direction from. We've got to be careful who we're following. See, because everyone's not going the same place we're going. They just start off that way. They go halfway that way with us. But when they're finished, they're not ordained to walk with us. But yet we find ourselves continually trying to tag and bring everyone with us. See, that's why we get emotionally attached or emotionally uh, abused because we're too busy trying to be with everybody. We constantly find ourselves having everybody been in everybody's assignment instead of taking care of our assignment. We find ourselves speaking all color shaped words and words that don't have any meaning, but yet we ask ourselves what's really going on. Many people find themselves mentally, physically, and spiritually lost, blind, and confused, wondering how did I get lost? Or how did I get there? And when did I get disconnected? Many people find themselves lost, blind, and off track 